Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall podcast where we are on location, not really any location in particular, just a location. Today we are going to talk about um, crowdfunding, like the positives and the negatives of such. How to do it right, how to do it wrong, and just kind of best practices. Because, as you know, I just finished a crowdfunding campaign. And I'm recording this now because I have this fucking giant stupid brace on my leg. And when I get home, the last thing I want to do is be sitting around with it, especially after I do the physical therapy, which is where we are going right now. So the last um, couple days, this is my third time, fourth time going into the therapy. It's, um, it's pretty fucking hardcore. I'm not going to lie. I keep thinking like when I'm there, it's fine and it's not that big of a deal. And I'm like, oh yeah, this feels good, this feels good. By the time I get home, my knee's like twice as fucking size and it just fucking kills. So I don't want to bore you with my bullshit pain crap. So, crowdfunding. There are a couple things right off the bat that I'll say. Um, And some of this stuff might sound crass or fucked up or whatever, but I'm I'm just saying it because it's fucking true, okay? And until this isn't true, like, don't give me shit for saying it. But crowdfunding works best when you have a... A cause, I guess is the best way to say it. But if you have a cause or a purpose for your project, it is so much more likely to really fucking take off and go viral, as fuckers say. And a lot of this is because, like, you're going to have your crew of people that come and help you out and all this other shit. You're also, if you are on a platform like Kickstarter, which we're going to talk about in a second, if you have a focus, if you have some sort of social goal or something like that, and again, we'll talk about that in a minute, they will push your shit. And if they push your shit, you're going to explode and it's going to be awesome doing this whole thing where you have a cause a lot of people who might not necessarily be into what you're doing like literature wise may help your project because they believe in the cause okay and I've seen people and I was just talking to a woman who wrote this fucking like sci-fi book and it was her first book it didn't do well she was really upset about it whatever so then she wrote another book and this book this is the sad thing it was basically the same book changed the main character to a young um, teenage girl who had addiction issues and who had been abused and then did this big marketing campaign about that and not really as much about what her book was about and you can say that feels dirty you're exploiting people with problems and all this other shit and that is true but she fucking made thousands of dollars on her campaign and it was something like she met her goal like within the first few hours of launching because so many people came in so quick 
and she had been doing a lot of talking about all of the other stuff around it that when it launched there were people like waiting for it and that is something that you should definitely do um like letting people know beforehand so when you launch it does well if you have a shit launch it's really hard to gain any traction especially on a platform to have the platform help push you the other thing is is that if you are doing a book and you're trying to crowdfund a book i highly highly recommend you staying away from indiegogo like i've been using indiegogo since like 2011 i think is when i started using indiegogo for film projects and it was always fine the two other books i crowdfunded on indiegogo one of them made like half the goal the other one made the goal and then this one made about half so for those of you who don't know i was looking for 1500 bucks and I ended up with um, 716 or 712, something in, in that ballpark with 17 backers. So that was awesome. And I fucking super, super fucking appreciate you guys. Kickstarter, on the other hand, their publishing category is really big and it's really booming and the community there seems to be a lot more active than on other crowdfunding platforms. So if you are going to do a crowdfunding campaign for a book, I would strongly recommend you look at Kickstarter, see what they're, cause a lot of the stuff I modeled this campaign off of I modeled off of people who were doing Kickstarter campaigns and the results were not anywhere close. So that kind of bummed me out a little bit. Like if you're listening to this far in the future, if there are other places that are doing awesome shit, then definitely go where the crowd is. But um, as of 2023, if you're publishing a book, I think you should try to do it through Kickstarter. The other plus side is, especially for those of us who have been sucking on the Amazon teat for so long, is when you are crowdfunding, there is no algorithm based on also bots like there is on Amazon. So when you are doing a crowdfunding campaign, you can have your mom, <laughs> that's funny uh, because of my book, but your mom or your dad or your uncle or your neighbor, you could get all these people involved to um, contribute to your project because it doesn't fuck up the also bots like it does on Amazon. Like when you launch a book on Amazon, you wanna make sure that for like the first month, you're not telling anyone you know about it. Um, and you just want people who dig your genre into it. But with, it, with Kickstarter, this is kind of like, well with crowdfunding, this is one of the things that I think is so fucking cool about it is that you don't, succumb to those obstacles that Amazon gives you. Now, one of the things I fucked up with this project, and it wasn't as much a fuck up as it was me trying to see like how it worked because my last two campaigns, I did that. I let like everyone I knew know about it. But this one, I tried to make sure the only people I told about this were people who have previously purchased my stuff before multiple times. Not like people who just bought one thing of mine. And definitely not anyone who just supported one of my crowdfunding campaigns. Like I specifically only let people know who were into poetry. And a lot of this was to see if I could honestly tell the difference between what I do on Amazon and what I do on Kickstarter or on crowdfunding platforms to kind of prove a point. Cause I could sit here and say, this is how things go. But unless I've checked both things of it, both sides of it, I can't fucking tell you. So yeah, um, definitely if you're going to crowdfund, tell every fucking person, you know, like I was saying about having a cause and shit, 
if you don't have a cause, it doesn't mean you won't be able to do well crowdfunding, but the numbers that you can hit if you do are going to like be like quadruple or higher. Like I'm not even fucking joking. Like it's ridiculous. So if your theme of your book can somehow fall into a category like that, definitely lay into that for sure. For sure. Um, another thing I did that I think hurt me is that I told everyone that this was a pre-order. And I did this purposefully because I was trying to see if crowdfunding books for Poetic Anarchy Press was something that was legitimate that I could do. I don't think that was a great idea. In the past, um, what I've done is said like, I need your help to make this happen because without you, this book will not happen. But then I go, but you know, me being me, no matter what happens, I'm gonna make this fucking book happen because that's just how I fucking roll. So with that said, I think that works better than me saying, hey, pre-order your book through Kickstarter or through Indiegogo because people just assume, oh, well, I could just get it later. Like there's no fucking rush. Like I don't have to jump on this. So that kind of bit me in the ass. Now, because I didn't meet my goal and I only hit halfway, the the dream of doing offset print books is not gonna happen. Like this is gonna be a digital print book and that fucking kind of breaks my heart a little bit. But the book's gonna come out and the book will be good and sturdy and last a long time and it'll look as good as that amount of money will allow it to look. That's fine. Do I wish I could have been able to get the amount to do what I actually wanted to do? Yes. Do I wish that this idea of using crowdfunding as pre-orders in order to make um, the publishing arm of the company work better and stronger? Of course. But um, it, it's just not shaken out that way. Another thing I learned, and I don't know if I could necessarily put this in a vacuum, but out of the three books that I've crowdfunded, two of the books were new poems, and one of the books was a collection of out-of-print chapbooks that had extra stuff in it that had never come out before. The book that was a collection of out-of-print chapbooks, that met its goal. The two books that were new poems did not meet its goal. So now I'm like, okay, so maybe it's the wording of this. Because if you think about it, new poems are poems that have never been out before. But when I'm putting together a collection of out-of-print chapbooks, and then one of the pluses is, Plus, you're going to get some stuff that's never been released. That's the same thing as saying new poems. You know what I'm saying? It's just the wording you use that changes the, the idea of how important something is. So, um, I don't know if I will ever do another crowdfunding campaign for a new book. I think if I do another crowdfunding campaign, or at least for poetry, um, I have some ideas for some like nonfiction or close to nonfiction stuff that I might want to um, crowdfund, but I'm not sure. But I think honestly, if I'm going to do another crowdfunding thing, it will be for out of print chapbooks because I'm. I'm coming up to a point where like probably by midsummer, a lot of my chapbooks are gonna be out of print. So we'll see how that goes. And with that said, there are some books of poetry I've been wanting to put out as new books of poetry that are big books of poetry that I've been sitting on these poems so I can put out another like anywhere from 150 to 300 page book of poetry. But the idea with Poetic Anarchy Press, what I wanted to do was every quarter 
crowdfund the pre-orders for a book of one of the poets that I was going to put out. And now I just don't know if that's a good idea. Now I might be going back to just doing chat books for poets that I put out and hope that eventually um, we get to a point with Poetic Anarchy Press that I can afford to do really nice printed books. When you do the crowdfunding thing, you need to spend like a month beforehand letting people know that the crowdfunding thing's gonna happen. You can't just start your crowdfunding campaign. And you have to let everyone know how important it is to like put their contributions in at the beginning. That is a really big, big plus for when doing crowdfunding campaigns. It's good to like have your your crew like ready to go. I'll say this. When like I'm not really having this issue with my campaign, but if you're gonna like offer a bunch of extra shit to like help incentivize people to sign up, make sure that the stuff you're adding is either stuff you already have or is stuff that isn't gonna cost extra because you don't want to have a thing be like where you have enough for your project, but now you gotta pay for all this extra shit that you never would have had to pay for anyway. Because if that's the case, then you're kind of fucked all over again. And now you're gonna have to maybe have another campaign to just get enough money to um, do the shit that you said you were gonna do in the first place. That's fucking hysterical. Um, I've gotten some really nice and amazing correspondence through the gamails from a lot of you. And um, I wanna thank you guys for that. And just know that I will be sharing that shit um, on future episodes. But obviously not this one because I'm driving. Another thing is that I wanted to talk about the way the podcast is going to work on YouTube for now on is um, the video podcasts are going to be in the feed for everyone and there will no longer be two feeds. So if you are just listening to this show and you want to see all the stuff that's happening, you need to go over to YouTube. If you are wanting to watch me drive around Los Angeles while I'm doing a podcast, um, I actually do a lot of vlog videos of me doing what I'm doing right now, but this one is for a podcast. So um, that those are also on my YouTube page as well. Okay, so maybe I should just get into the butt plugs now. I don't have, obviously, all of my stuff to do the shout-outs, but what I am going to do this time to make it a little different is I'm going to do the shout-outs of the people who I got to send stuff to today. So, because a lot of you are in the cruise, so it's okay. I want to give a thank you to... Jens, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Shockey, to Tim, to Brian, to Deborah, to Tamara, to Jeff, to Ethan, to Bunny, to TT, to Mark, to Robert, to Michael, to Rich, to Matthew, to Chase, to Britt, to Shaylin, to Adam, and to Caitlin. Thank you guys so much. Now I gotta take all of these to the post office. By the time you see this, my new chat book, Me as an Action Figure, will be out. So run over to Etsy and pick that up.
I hope you enjoyed that episode that was me driving in a car. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to me at ihatematwall@gmail.com. Go to ihatematwall.com to find out all about everything that's going on. Keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.